All righty. I think that is our cue to get started. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kristen Nilsson. I am a council member for Next Niagara, um, and I have the pleasure of chatting with Andrea Sacco today. Um, Andrea is from Niagara Falls, and she studied public health um, at Brock University and currently works full time in the public health field. She's the owner of Yet You Empower Tomorrow. After embarking on her own career journey, she noticed a pattern of individuals feeling unworthy and unsure of what they wanted to pursue in their career in academics. She's committed to helping support individuals when they are experiencing feelings of confusion about their next steps and help people pursue their passion, incorporating life lessons from her own journey, as well as empowerment education and life purpose coaching. Um, so I got flagged for this session because my background is also in career coaching. Um, and then to our surprise, Andrea and I found out we have much more in common. We both um, worked briefly as recruiters or me a little bit longer than Andrea at different times, recruiters for the university. Um, and I think that just solidifies my opinion that there's a specific type of people who do that role and they tend to kind of find themselves later. So um, I'm excited to chat. This is going to be a really kind of casual conversation. Um, if you have any questions, um, I'll be moderating the chat. Um, so we'll pop those in when we can. Um, but Andrea, I think let's just start with Tell us a little bit more. I didn't want to give too much away just about your own career journey and, and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for that nice little intro there. Um, a little bit about myself, like you mentioned, I am the owner of You Empower Tomorrow, um, which focuses a lot on empowerment education to help people transform their careers and whatever it may be. Um, more about my career journey and just me personally, as you mentioned, I went to Brock University and followed that pursuit of, okay, I finished high school, I'm going to go to university, get a job, yada, yada, yada. What I learned is that it doesn't always go that way. Um, and that's totally okay. Um, throughout my career journey, I've had the struggles of being a little bit unsure about certain things. Maybe I wanted to pursue something and then change my mind, or I'm doing something currently, and it's still not giving me that full satisfaction of what I believe I can do. Um, so just recognizing that it's okay to pivot and turn and just recognize your strengths and being able to pinpoint those and pulling from them and using them in whatever career you do end up pursuing. So my career journey was ups and downs and that's totally okay, but I'm here now. <laughs> and always makes more sense when you look back on it. Like if someone told you what you would be doing, you'd right. be like, what? Yeah. <laughs> but now you think back and you're like, okay, I, I understand how we got to where we Absolutely. are now. Um, One of the I'm biggest sure lessons I've learned was that you can incorporate the things that you love and change within your current career. Yeah. And I think too, today, like careers aren't linear necessarily. And like, uh, compared to like our parents' generation, even when you like started a role and would work there for 30 years. And also so many job titles, I would say the majority of jobs I've had, the job title doesn't really mean anything to anyone. So we're living in a totally different world. Absolutely. Yeah. Nailed it there. So, you know, talking about that a little bit, and I think this will be where you can speak to your own experience, but also what you see in other people, you know, what are some of those key moments for you that greatly influenced the direction of your career? Like the moment where you knew a pivot happened or someone said something like, what were some of those for you? Yeah. So when I first graduated from Brock, the next step is master's, right? In today's society, it's more education, more education, more education. And I wasn't sure. I didn't want to do it. it. I felt it in my gut that that wasn't my next step. So I think the biggest key moment for me was taking a step, taking a pause, reflecting, and just kind of being there where I was. And it was scary and uncomfortable, especially when you don't have a plan. And I'm such a type A person where I'm like, okay, at this time, at this month, at this age, I'm going to be here and I'm going to be doing this. And it wasn't working for me that way. So I took that pause and I, like you mentioned, I got into recruitment. And while I was in recruitment, I was still applying to jobs here and there. And I got offered a, a position with my current role right now in the public health, in public health. So 
yeah, it just, I took that pause without thinking I was never going to get this job without having more education. And then it kind of just fell in my lap. And that's kind of where everything changes when things just, you take a pause and everything will kind of fall in your lap. So there's this, I call it the four styles of purpose or passion or whatever you want to call it. Everyone has different language, um, but there's four categories. So there's things that I'm skilled at, but have no passion for. Then there's things that I'm skilled at and I have a passion for, things that I'm not skilled at and lack passion for, and then things that lack, I lack skill in, but I have a passion for. And really pinpointing the things that I am skilled at and I have a passion for and making sure that everything was in alignment with that moving forward because you don't want a job that you dislike. <laughs> Ideally, we can we can avoid that, right? If if we can, but I think you touched on it too. Finding those strengths, right, which often you don't realize until you're working. Um, and you know, it's funny that recruitment role. So for people watching, it's a four month contract, and it really is this kind of like for a lot of people, like this pit stop, a great job, but like you're almost delaying your your career. Like you're getting a little bit of extra time. Um, which sometimes you need to do. And like, if you're watching other people, you know, move ahead and move up, like it's okay if you're not there yet. And it's okay to just take a second or a few months or a year to just like figure out what you need rather than chasing this thing that like, you don't even know what the thing you're chasing is. Uh -huh. And I think it's so important that we take that time to figure out what we're passionate and skilled at, because if we don't take that time, it, it's going to pop up later in life. Eventually, it's going to catch up to you that you are not content or, or happy in wherever it is that you're pursuing your career. Or maybe it's not career based. Maybe it's your life in general. But mm -hmm. when we don't really take that time for ourselves to take that pause and reflect on what is it that act I actually am good at? And I have that little butterfly feeling when I'm doing. Totally. So, you know, we're talking about passion a little bit, but how do you define passion in work? And on that, is it realistic to feel like, is it realistic to feel like we can always do what we're passionate about as a career? So Absolutely perfect. not. No, we cannot always be passionate in our career as much as we want to. Things are not butterflies and rainbows. Um, I think passion is, is doing what you love, like let's say 80% of the time. Getting that little feeling that you're actually making an impact in whatever it is you want to do. Getting really excited to want to do the work that you're doing in your everyday life but also acknowledging that it's not going to be perfect and you're not going to feel that excitement feeling all the time. And that's okay. Most of the time when we have our bright ideas and the biggest changes in our lives, it's from taking that pause and slowing down from the excitement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, I think passion too is like, is it the work you're doing in the field that you're in, or is it the type of work you're doing? And you could be doing that anywhere and you'd still get like jazzed up about it. And like, I've had a number of different roles. And I think the more you can experience, the easier it is to start to pinpoint those things, right? Especially coming out of school, you are who you are as a student and you don't necessarily know who you are down the road. But even if people have been in a job for six years, like they may not have experienced all of the things that are going to light them up. So being able to work on different projects or, you know, volunteering or starting your own thing as Absolutely. you have done might be the thing to light you up. And it might not involve income, which is what everyone struggles with, right? It's like we live in a society where we need to make money in order to survive. And sometimes it's just not feasible and that's okay. We can still use our passion in a completely different way or incorporate it into our work. Might mm -hmm. not be exactly how we want it to, but it's a nice little segue. Well, and we talked a little bit about this in our like conversation beforehand, right? Of like, yeah. we also live in a hustle culture world and the feeling that you do have to monetize that thing that you love and this pressure to like, should I be making money? 
from this as well, whether you need to or not, but that really changes how you look at the thing that you love to do that might not be work-related. Uh-huh. Absolutely. And sometimes it'll kind of fall into that income piece too. Like who knows, you might try something and then all of a sudden people are reaching out to you and you're like, oh my gosh, this could actually be a job for me. And I never even thought about it like that. It can be a little passion project, whatever you want to call it, just tying it in. Mm -hmm. You could even have your current career and ask to seek opportunities with your employer that kind of fill that little void inside of you as well. Mm -hmm. And so speaking of all of those kind of things, I think it brings us to this next question of what if our passion isn't in alignment with our circumstances? So perhaps the passion can't support you financially. There's geographic limitations, family circumstances that prevent that path from being a possibility. Like what do we do when that's the case? Yeah. So as I mentioned, you can do so many things that give you that excitement inside without it influencing your daily job or your daily income, or let's say you have to provide, you have to get food on the table for your family. You need a job or the circumstances, so-and-so is sick and you might not be able to work right now. But hey, maybe that's you reading up on something that gives you joy or joining a webinar like today or uh, listening to a podcast or journaling about some things and ideas that you have that you wanna bring to light one day. It's kind of just tapping in it might not be bringing it to flourishing right now, but just tapping into those skills that really give you that excitement and then hoping and hopefully you can in the future, slowly integrate it into your career or into something completely different, mm-hmm. but not losing that. It's you like a garden, you need to attend it all the time, right? You wanna make sure you're watering and getting the light to the plants. Even though you're not using that skill right now, you still want to be watering it and giving it light. Mm-hmm. It's finding those moments, right? Exactly. To, to find the flow. We call it the flow, right? What do yeah. you get lost in? Exactly. And it doesn't have to be your 24-7. No. And it doesn't even have to be a work-related thing. It can be coloring. It could be knitting. It could be whatever it is that gives you that like mindfulness feeling of like, I'm here in the present moment and I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Totally. So we actually have a question um, in the chat. So just where we've been talking kind of about, you know, um, finding the pause, but how do people um, navigate changing roles or putting their career on pause to find something that brings them more passion? So you're working. So how do you navigate working and trying to find that next thing? That's a great question. And a lot of my clients feel this way. Obviously, you're not going to quit your job because you have this dream or there's this idea that you have and you really believe in yourself. But we, we live in a world, like I mentioned, we need income. We need, we need security. We can't just drop everything and, okay, I'm going to go move across the world and do this. Um, but I think It's about incorporating it, and I'll mention this time and time again, into what we're currently doing. So although my role right now at Public Health, for example, might not be about things that really give me that passion and light, but I've tuned into my strengths. So I know that I'm more right-brained, and with talking with people and doing some different activities, I've learned that I, I like that creative side. So bringing it to management and being like, hey, I'm good at this and I enjoy this. Is there any projects or anything that I can do that will allow me to put that strength to good use? But then also you want to recognize your weaknesses as well. So you want to recognize that, okay, I might not be the strongest in this. What can I do to make me enjoy this a little bit better? Or what can I do to sharpen up this skill a little bit so it's not so dragging? When we are weak in something, which we all have weaknesses and that's totally okay, it drags us down because when we're not good at something, we don't want to do it. It's just human nature. So if we take the time to sharpen up those weaknesses as much as we hate it and as as comfortable as it feels, it'll truly change the way we work and feel. And when we start to have that confidence in ourselves that, okay, I'm not as bad as this at this as I thought I was, it'll kind of incorporate that passion into your current work. And then, hey, if that's not working for you, you always have the option to start things on your own and then slowly incorporate them, wait to see if you can get an income or whatever it may be from there. 
and then slowly leave your current position. Mm -hmm. It sounds like, um, really like make the best of the circumstances that you're in as you're there, but you know, at the same time, be thinking about what is my exit strategy or what do I need to do to move out of it? Because like you said, and we're in Niagara and it's expensive to live here. Like you can't just kind of leave without a plan in most situations. So, um, I really like that advice. Yeah. And also I think, Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think the weakness piece as well of how you described, you know, it might not come naturally. It might not be our favorite, but figuring out how to make it okay is also beneficial when you are in the job search. Cause the famous question of like, what's your greatest weakness, which people really dread understanding how you overcome those is really the secret to that question. It's not saying like, I'm bad at this and I can't do it. And I don't want to do it. It's this doesn't come naturally, but here's how I've overcome that. Exactly. And I think that the underlining purpose or formula for passion and discovering your passion is discovering you, your strengths, your weaknesses, what brings that fire to you, um, and then using that to fuel your passion. It's not necessarily, oh, I like this, so that's what I'm passionate about. It's really tuning into who you are as a person. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go a little off script here. We haven't talked yeah, about this one, but speaking ahead. of that, do you have any like tools or resources that are readily available that help people kind of identify some of those things, or is it a coaching session? Like how, cause I feel like it's easy to say, like, figure out what you like to do, but that can be hard. So, so how can hard. people do that? So, so hard. It involves so much work. And a lot of the time when I'm working with clients, we don't, we don't see results right away. If anyone here today has ever worked with a therapist, for example, you do not see results right away. It is hard, hard work. And you need to go and do that work every single day. Um, And I think with my coaching sessions, I kind of pull into, it's called empowerment education, but pretty much it focuses on the principles and foundations and theories of the whole person approach. So not necessarily here's some coaching and I'm going to help you with your resume and your cover letter, but let's tune into who you are. Um, what empowers you, what gives you that fire, like I mentioned, some psychology behind it, um, some leadership and creating living in your personal purpose. So who you are as that person. So in the coaching session, I have no secret formula or no exercise that I do specifically, um, but I'll read with, uh, with that individual person. We try to make it extremely unique to them and what they need. Um, And it can take months, it could take days, it could take an hour, Um, but it's totally up to you as a person and where you are in your life path. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a constant reflective practice. And I'm really lucky to work on a team right now that's really into reflection. So to my benefit, that's really helped. But one thing I'm going through, um, kind of putting together a portfolio um, and someone suggested, you know, look at your past performance reviews and we use a different performance review process, but like see what your supervisors have said about you. Like how do they describe you? And you can use that to be like, oh yeah, like I am really good at that. Or like everyone says that about me. So sometimes we have these things that we don't even realize are giving us information we can use about ourselves. Yeah, that's one of the exercises I actually do. Like, how would someone else describe you? Mm -hmm. And we'll get into this near the end, but even how we describe ourselves is always about what we're doing for other people and Mm -hmm. not about who we actually are. Yeah, the the core, right? And the core of us. Your job. We always introduce ourselves by our job title. I'm a mother. I'm a teacher. I'm this. I'm that. But no, who who are you? (laughs) Yeah. No, I love that. Yeah. Um, now, sorry, I'm just looking through my questions Absolutely. here to make sure we're staying on track, but also I know we're going with the flow. Um, and again, if anyone has any questions or thoughts, like I don't think you can all see it, but we can see it. So feel free to ask a question. Um, so, you know, you and I both have had the experience of working with students, 16, 17, 18, who are making these the biggest decision of their life, figuring out what they're doing for post-secondary. 
how and is your advice different when you're talking to a 17 year old trying to figure out like the rest of your life versus someone who's established and seemingly should know what they want <laughs> want to do like is that advice different age is no number it's it's nothing. Um, honestly, I talk to students. I have little sisters still in high school. So I talk to them. Um, I work with people who are on the verge of retirement. I work with people who have their family started. And there's this common persistent theme amongst all of them that doesn't matter what age you are, they're just confused. They, they don't know who they are or why they're doing what they're doing. They, they just don't feel that sense of happiness and fulfillment in their everyday life. And no matter the age, it's that consistent feeling of being unworthy or, or just unsure. And we're following this like, wake up, go to work, come home. And I think COVID, um, I hate to bring this up. I know the trigger word for all, but... <laughs> I think COVID has really, really helped individuals tune into themselves and be like, oh, life isn't just about waking up, going to work, coming home, feeding the kids, going to bed, repeat, repeat, repeat. Um, so hopefully it opens up some really good discussions and people within all age ranges can really fine tune what they want to do with their lives. Yeah, I, I think COVID almost built in that pause for some of us, even if we've been lucky like I'm lucky enough and I know a lot of people here have been lucky enough to stay employed, but the changes in those circumstances force you to reflect on a lot of things, you know, not going to the office every day and what does your life look like? And I've personally had some of that as well of like reimagining what could life look like now that I know I could survive not physically seeing my colleagues every day. And like, there's been no point in time where you've been able to like ever think about that until we've done it. We're open to a world of opportunities now. And I know we've discussed this offline um, and how like now with working from home, we have the opportunity to do jobs that we never even thought we could do based on location. And it's just these options are phenomenal because we're finally being able to do what we're passionate about and, and give us that excitement and joy in our lives. And all these opportunities and doors are starting to open for us. Well, and I think that's where, you know, if we're speaking, hopefully a lot of people on this call are from Niagara and understand what I'm about to say, but like geographically, we don't necessarily have the same opportunities as a Toronto or even someone who lives on that entire stretch of go transit. Um, so yeah, I think a lot of people, like you said, are reimagining what is available to me and that can be really exciting um, to people. And I also wanted to touch on when we're talking about passion and people are confused um, and you can share your thoughts on this too. Like sometimes you can, it doesn't mean you're always confused in your career. You can love what you do and then you just know your time with that is so done, yeah. but you do, you're confused because you don't know. So you recognize the feeling of like, yep, like, my time is done, but what's next? So do you see a lot of like that in your clients? I call it like, it's like that fear that rushes in that fear. Once you start feeling that sense of fear that, oh my gosh, if I start something new, it's going to be scary. It's going to be uncomfortable. I don't know if I can do it. I'm comfortable where I am. I don't know. Once you start to feel that, that's your cue to move. <laughs> it's like your cue to switch up and move. Because if you're feeling that fear of, oh no, I am going to be so uncomfortable. I'm going to have to learn something completely new. It's pretty much a signal about whatever it might be telling you it's time. It's time to do that move. And you will learn so much when you just take that leap. Of course, mm -hmm. there's things that hold us back. That's a whole other topic. And it's important to make sure that we're not just completely taking a leap without thinking about our lives and our worlds and our families. Um, but just listening to the cues in your head, if you're, you're constantly thinking about, oh, I don't know, or this job opportunity came up or you're, you're always looking at the job board, but you've had this job for 30 years. Why, why are you looking at that job board? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or, you know, start to have feelings about like, I know some people have, they look around and think I could be doing the job of this person. And, and why am I here? Right? Like that can be the indicator. Um, 
as well. So yeah, it's, um, I think just if anyone's listening, like know that it comes in waves and like, if you're really happy in a role and then all of a sudden you're not like that's natural and that's growth. I think qualifications hold a lot of people back as well. Um, don't get me wrong. Qualifications are, are great. A lot of employers need them. We need some kind of education to make sure you're okay to do this job, some kind of accreditation, but don't get fixated on those qualifications. Don't get fixated on the experience. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many transferable skills. If you've been in your role for 40 years, think about all of the things you've learned in mm -hmm. that whatever years that you've been there. It's definitely one or two or five or 10 skills are going to be transferable to that current role. Just take the leap and apply. What do you got to lose? Well, I always say, if you don't apply, you've made the decision for them. So at yeah. least give them a chance to review. But I really liked what Corey said in um, the keynote this morning. And he was like nervous. And his coach said, you know what you're doing. And I think that's so important for us to remember is like, you've been successful at what you've been doing and sure something might be scary but like think of all the things that you've learned and think of all the things that you bring with you rather than what am I missing if I start this job so yeah. it's kind of that mindset shift I think this goes in perfectly with this question um, so it is, what is your advice on attaining a job in this current market? I have been out of college for two years and have been on many interviews, but haven't landed a job in my field. How do you get out of the cycle of can't get a job without experience, can't get experience without the job? I posted this on my LinkedIn because I saw it was literally a circle and it was like, can't get a job. I need experience. I need experience. I need a job. Yeah. Um, and I feel you, <laughs> but I also always tell my clients to tune into your education. No one ever thinks of their four years, six years undergrad as experience. But think of all of the projects, all of the assignments that you had, all of the community partnerships you built. Um, I don't, in public health, we did a lot of, they were called capstone projects. We were partnered with an outside organization and we have to do something for them that's experience. And that should be on your resume. Um, even if you worked in, I don't know, customer service, it's a matter of really tuning into what did I do? You didn't just serve food to them. No, you provided an experience. You helped them. You increased labor and sales. You did this, you did that. Just making sure that you're aligning the things that you did do with that job description. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people struggle with this. They're always like, oh, I have nothing to do with the health field. I, I just graduated from health sciences, but I've never done anything health related. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, well, what did you learn in four years in health science? <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, I did this and I went here and I did this advisory at the at Brock or I did this advisory at Niagara College. And uh, yeah, and I'm like, you just listed like 10 things. <laughs> Yep. Yep. And in my work experiential education, which would have been similar in public health, there's like the equivalent mm -hmm. of me in public health. And so students will work on these community partner projects, consulting, solving real world problems. And then they'll come and be like, I have no experience. And I know that that's not true. So whether you've been out of school for a while, like, I think it's just important to remember, like, reflect on all of those experiences. And Andrea, to your point, you don't have to have the exact experience you just have to have like relatable experience or show that skill, right? Because if all we ever did was apply to jobs that we had the exact experience for, then we would never really do anything different. And volunteer experience. This is another question that comes up. It's not experience. I didn't get paid for it. It wasn't a job. Volunteer experience is experience. It should be on your resume without a doubt. If you don't want to call it jobs or whatever it is, you can reword your resume to say different things. You can say work related experience mm -hmm. and have it tossed in there, um, a volunteer position that you'd done, or you can do some modules. There's so many free online modules and webinars that you can do and have those in there as certificates and stuff that you've achieved. Um, mm -hmm. Also, when I'm working with clients, it's just a matter of, like you mentioned, wording how exactly to word my resume so I can pull on those things that they're looking for in that job description. Mm -hmm. And of course, like just believing in yourself and going ahead and, and doing it and networking with individuals too. Like LinkedIn is a great platform for that, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, 
network, 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 and meet people. (laughs) I'm laughing because if anyone was in my resume 15 minute session earlier this morning, like so much of this is just like reinforcing a lot of those things. So hopefully anyone from that session is like, okay, I get it. Andrea is telling me too. Um, But I know I'm conscious of time and I wanted to get to this question. Um, So what are some of the keys that you would recommend to help someone get out of a place of stagnation? Yeah. So I call this the notice note new technique. Um, There's lots of different words for it, recognize, reset, um, but notice that something's up, that something's wrong, that fear, that little piece of you that keeps looking at the job board, notice it, give it validation. It's there for a reason. Notice it and note it, write it down. You can journal about it, whatever it is that helps you kind of recognize why you're feeling a certain way. Um, note it. And then I want you to create something new. Um, I want you to introduce a new way of processing it or um, look into ways that you can make that thing new. So let's say you have this fear, you are over your job, you keep looking at the job board, notice that you have that fear and it's okay, you're validating it, note it, okay, why am I feeling this way? Oh, I don't know, I've been in this job for 15 years, it's just not giving me the satisfaction it used to okay, what can we do about that? Our new thing is, okay, let's look for some jobs or let's look for some ways to sharpen our skills. Maybe let's talk to management and see if there's a new project that I can get in on that will help bring that joy back to me or something like that. Maybe I can be a mentor to a new employee and we can chat and they might help fuel my fire. Um, But just, yeah, notice, note and new and, and work from there and just keep repeating that process and giving yourself some compassion and love while you're doing it because it's hard work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think anytime we're changing development, working on ourselves, like give ourselves credit for how much work that a to even notice that you might need to take those steps, but then to stick with that process. Um, always self-reflection is a lot of work. Um, it's valuable, but it's a lot of work. So much work. And it's exhausting, um, but for the benefit, but you know, yeah. I can see people like, we're really pushing everyone away from it. do it, but it is like, I think give yourself credit for like being able to take that step and like do that personal development work. Like you said, right? Like it's, it's work and a, an achievement to say, I need therapy. It's work and an achievement to say, Hey, I could use a career coach. It's work and achievement. Anytime you have to you recognize your need, but then take the steps to like solve that, that Mm -hmm. issue. Um, we have another question just really quickly. Um, just kind of, and I'll, I'll frame this in a bit of a different way too. So the question is about doing LinkedIn courses relevant to the industry Are LinkedIn courses worth doing, but I'll expand that a little bit more, um, to get your thoughts on, assessing whether or not you should get training, get education, like, is it worth the time? I think sometimes is the question. So what are your thoughts on trying to figure out if things are worth it? Well, the LinkedIn courses A are free and they're not very time consuming. So if, if you have this urge to do it and you feel like it might benefit you based on the job description, it relates, it relates somewhat to the job description that you are applying to do it. There's no harm in it. You'll probably learn something. When there's a fee attached or when it's a really big time commitment, you should probably put a little bit more thought into it. Um, I always say work backwards. So maybe contact people who are currently in the field that you hope to be in. Ask them, hey, do did you do this training or is it worth me doing this training? Do you use this in your career? Look at their LinkedIn profiles. Most likely it'll have what trainings they've done. Um, and just work backwards. That's the job you want to do. Okay, let's go and look and see what they have and then pull from there. If you see majority of those people working in that field have that training, then it might be worth spending the money on and the time on. But if not, maybe not. Um, But going back to the LinkedIn ones, they're free and there's a great way for you to just learn some skills and sharpen up on some skills. So there's no harm in doing those ones. Yeah. And I think if it's, I don't know if you felt this way, there's so many free things online, especially during the pandemic. So, um, you know, you don't have to do it all, but try to be strategic in what, in what you do. Um, 
so just just know that because I think Zoom burnout is real. Um, oh yeah, and Zoom don't too much <laughs> I know there's things I'm like save this, save this, save this. I'm like I don't need to watch all of the things. <laughs> so. The amount of webinars I'm sent in a day at work should be illegal. <laughs> like I don't have time to listen to 18 webinars. <laughs> You'd love to, but yep. <laughs> we can't. Um, no, that's awesome. Um, and I'm I'm aware of the time as well too. So if anyone has any questions to pop in, um, let us know. But um, Andrea, I know you have an activity for us, but I also want to make sure if there's anything that you haven't said, you kind of have time to say any parting words of wisdom, um, career changes and figuring out our passions and figuring yeah. out the path to go down. Um, especially, yeah, if you're established in your career and you think I should have it all together, like, why don't I know what I need to do? Like, these are all normal feelings, but any, you know, words of wisdom that you want to make sure you get out. Um, I want to give you the time to do that. I just, as you can tell from this chat, I am an open book. So please, um, you can go to my Instagram. I can actually, uh, I don't know, oh, they won't be able to see the chat, but you and Power Tomorrow or Yet Niagara, um, send me any direct messages. I am an open book. I am willing to answer any and all. Um, you can send me a LinkedIn message on my personal LinkedIn or on my work LinkedIn as well. I'm happy to answer anything there. Um, and I think my biggest thing is just, just take a pause, just take a step back. And instead of being like, okay, I need to come up with a plan. I'm going to write down my plan. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Let's just take it back a notch and, and think about, okay, why am I doing this? And really questioning ourselves as people. Um, I think that's the first step in really achieving anything towards your passion and really putting that, like you mentioned, passion into action is just mm -hmm. taking that step back. Why? Asking yourselves those big, big, hard questions and even asking the people around us, like, what do you think is mm -hmm. going on? And how do you think I could improve in, in listening to these people? Of course, if it's not aligned with what you're feeling, don't listen to these people. Family is really easy to influence you. Um, but just knowing exactly what it is, who it is, why you're feeling that way. Mm -hmm. And finding some of those champions too, right? Because sometimes it can't be family. Sometimes yeah. like they don't get what you're doing or trying to achieve. It could be a complete stranger and that's okay. <laughs> And then like events like this or coffee chats, like reaching out to someone on LinkedIn, you never know who will help you. But I also would add to, to kind of the taking a pause, be realistic in knowing that if you want to make a change, it doesn't happen no, overnight. No. And when we speak specifically to job search, it's a numbers game. There's a lot of variables we can't control. So I would also say, just like give yourself patience and grace in. If it's meant to be, it will be. And I know it's so annoying when you apply to, I think I applied to like 42 jobs when I got out of school. It's annoying and it's, it's frustrating, but just give yourself grace. Just take a sec and be like, okay, I didn't get that job for a reason. And eventually when you get the job, you're like, oh, that's why. <laughs> um, so just wait for that moment. I promise it's coming. <laughs> And usually the jobs that you don't get, again, with distance from it, you can say, oh yeah, that I That's that worked why. out. Someone was looking out for me. Like that was the best thing that could have happened. But yeah. um, you and I both know like it is a it's a stressful and emotional process. Um, so I think having that resilience and and compassion to yourself is really an important tool tool in your toolkit of like going through the process. Mm -hmm. Um but I want to pass it to you for your kind of final reflective yeah. activity before yeah. we have to go and head off to lunch. I just, it's more so just something for everyone to reflect on and to think about with pursuing careers and whatever it may be, even just life. Um, everyone, when I do my interview prep, the first question I always ask is, how do you describe yourself? Like, tell me, tell me about yourself. And people just start, oh, well, I did this and I did that. And I went to school for this and I have this and that and that. I'm like, no, no, no. Who are you? Like, who are you as a person? Not I'm a mother, I'm a teacher. Like, who are you? Mm -hmm. So I'm challenging everyone now. And I'm going to challenge you right now to tell me three things about yourself that has nothing to do with other people. So instead of I'm a mother and I'm a teacher, replace I'm a mother with I'm strong. Um, instead of I'm a teacher, I'm wise. These are qualities that you are within. 
So I'm going to pass it to you, pass the torch to you to give me some uh, three things that you are. And if anyone feels comfortable in the chat, only we can see it. Uh, feel free to plop in your three words that describe you as a person. Yeah, if you're comfortable, we'll share them. So um, just know that I was, uh, I had a heads up that this was <laughs> coming. So if anyone's like, wow, Kristen, you thought about those really quickly. Um, I had a bit of a heads up and had some time to reflect. But um, my three words um, are, I am driven, I am empathetic, and I also think I'm funny. So maybe not to everyone, but I think I'm pretty funny. So those are my my three words, but um, interested to see what uh, everyone else says. So again, um, nothing to do with others, or I guess your relationship to others, right, Andrea? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like I mentioned, you don't have to put in the chat, just something to reflect upon. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was awesome. It was so fun. <laughs> we were both really looking forward to this Um this chat, I think our pre-chat was really great. And then, yeah. And this is why, like, I'm so excited about this day because I know as a council, we've met so many really cool, passionate, engaged people in Niagara. Um, I wish we could be doing it in person. And I really look forward to the day when we can all have an event together and actually like see what, see how tall people are. And, like, it's crazy. When you meet people for the first time, you're like, I'm five feet. So I'm always like, <laughs> And people might not know that. So no, um, now you do. <laughs> but I'll share the three words someone submitted. Um, we've got curious, stubborn, introverted, intuitive, loves chaos, um, lived in four countries, traveled to 16. So a traveler, wow. I guess wow. that's awesome. Explorer, adventurer. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So Thank I you think for sharing these examples, um, creative, ambitious, quick learner. Um, I'm loving these. <laughs> and it really shows like the differences between people, right? And like just how we identify ourselves and our strengths. Like that's so cool to see just how people see themselves. And sometimes that's hard to come across on the screen, but. Um, Lovely. I'm going to plop in my um, Instagram handle. If anyone has any additional questions, they just half the time I'm in the shower. I'm like, oh, I should have asked that. So <laughs> if you have any questions, just feel free to send me a message. And I don't know if anyone can see that. So I'll just say it's oh, at Y-E-T -E Niagara. Oh, perfect. Brad put it in He there. did it. Thanks, We're Brad. good. All right. So it's almost lunchtime. I know we have a good, cool session coming up with Odd Bird and Odd Bar. But Andrea, I just want to say thank you so much for coming, sharing your expertise. Um, just chatting and hopefully providing everyone who's listening with some really tangible advice and feedback um, as they move through maybe a career change or reflecting on their own experiences. But like Andrea said, feel free to connect um, LinkedIn. My tip for LinkedIn is send a personalized message when you connect on LinkedIn, let people know where you uh, found them. But uh, with that, Andrea, thank you so much. Um, we will see you later and to everyone else, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Thank you so much and good luck, everyone. <laughs>